Hi guys. Today I'm going to be doing a video on how to do a pet portrait. This is going to be number one of a series of videos and the pet portrait is going to be done on watercolor paper. First we're going to start off with pencil, then it's going to be pen and ink, and at the end it'll be watercolor. So the final image will be watercolor and ink on watercolor paper. So first I'm going to start off with a pencil and the pencils I like to use are just your run-of-the-mill um, number two pencil this is just like an office supply pencil it's no nothing special or you can use an actual artist pe pencil this is a 2b either one it really doesn't matter um, like I said this is just preliminary and it's mostly going to be erased so it just doesn't matter you want to have a very light touch um, so no pencils that are super dark um, a super hard uh, lead pencil will make up maybe a dent in the paper so you just want to keep it right in the middle number two and then the next thing I'm going to need is an eraser. And this is basically a, what you call a gum eraser, but don't let that fool you. It's not actually made out of gum. It's just called a gum eraser. And then the other thing I have is my iPad. And I use my iPad to work from, and here I have a reference photo. So you can see the photo right there and I'm gonna be working almost directly from this photo without a lot of changes. Okay, so to start out, what you wanna do is very lightly rough in where the dogs are gonna go. And oh, I forgot to say, this paper is already marked out uh, at an 11 by 14 dimension. So I measure 11 by 14 because that's a standard uh, painting size and then just sort of make a box in those dimensions. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna do is block in the dog on the right, the smaller one. And this is just really light and you are blocking in very roughly where the shapes are gonna go and it doesn't have to be detailed in any way. I'm just making circles and keeping it really, really light. And if you mess up, you can erase all this and start again. You can do that several times. So don't worry about it too much. You're just kind of blocking in, like I said, very lightly. So the first dog, I'll show you her head is very close to the top. And that's how I want it to be in my drawing. So. I'm gonna start up here and kind of just loosely draw a circle for where I want her head to be, or his, I can't remember which, which one this is. Is this a girl or a boy? I don't know. Okay, so there's the head and I'm looking about, is it the right distance from the top? Yeah, is it the right distance from the side? Looks pretty close. Okay, so very rough area for the head. Now I'm gonna put another oval that kind of shows where the body's gonna be. And if you look at the photograph, the bottom of her torso is about halfway down the picture. Between here and here, it's just about halfway. So I'm gonna use that as a guide on my drawing and I'm gonna look at the halfway point and it's about there. So I know I'm kind of on the right track as far as where the body goes. And now this dog has her head looking pretty much straight at the viewer, but her body is leaning off to the side a little bit. So I'm gonna think about that line being the angle of her head and then this body is a little bit off to the side. And then she has her two legs and paws are following that same angle with the body. And I'm not trying to show the details of the legs. I'm really roughly indicating where those are gonna go. Then up here, there's just a little hint of her rib cage and her belly or his 
And then you can just a little bit back here, you can see sort of more her hind end and a little bit of her kind of like her knee there and a little paw. Okay, so this doesn't look like a dog at all at this point and it shouldn't. It's just marking in area. You've got the head, the body, the two legs, and the back leg. The other leg is hidden underneath her body, so you're not showing that. And this is gonna look really small, but it's because it's further back in space. And that's what you call, uh, well, it's not really, for, I started to say it's called foreshortening, but that's not really what it is. But anyway, that's dog number one. Now, the second dog, I'll show you the picture. His or her head is much bigger in proportion to this one because she or he is much closer to the viewer. So that head is gonna be a lot bigger and then the body comes even closer a little bit. So the body's gonna seem really big compared to this dog's body. And then the other thing to point out is that this dog, her head, his head are, is turned at an angle, kind of cocked her said, head to the side. So that means that line goes like that. And that's gonna help make sure that everything looks like it's tilted the way it is in the photo. So I can see that a little tennis ball is right here by this dog's foot. So that helps me tell how far away. And then this dog's head, it comes up even with the, um, the first dog's back foot. And it's a lot bigger, like I said. So again, I'm just drawing kind of a flattened circle, a little bit wider than it is tall um, to indicate where the head is gonna go. And then down here, you've got one foot and the other leg and foot. And then right about here is where the body goes off the edge of the picture. And I'm lucky here because I'm working from a really great photograph that the owner of the dogs gave me. It's really clear, I can see all the details and it's a nice composition so I don't actually have to do work in, in terms of getting the composition to look great. This is such a good photo that I can work straight from it, which is really helpful. And if for some reason I didn't like, like I got to this point and maybe I decided something was a little off, which I may, I may still. Um, you can just erase what you've got at this point. You can completely erase it if you want to. The pencil, since you're using a very light touch, it should come right off. And then uh, when you go to, let's say I'm just erasing a little bit of this, there'll be that eraser dust. Make sure that your hands are really clean when you go to brush it off because you don't want oils from your skin to go onto the paper where it'll make the watercolor not want to stick later on. And you also don't want to smear that graphite. So when you do go to erase, um, use a very, very light touch or you can actually lift the paper up to an angle and um, brush it off that way. So... Next, what I'm gonna do is kind of start working on just a little bit more detail. So I'm gonna look at the head here and it might be a little bit hard to see my pencil lines if you're watching this on a phone. Um, you might wanna open it up and watch it on your laptop and then you'll be able to see my pencil lines a little bit better. But right now I'm figuring out where the ears are and then come down that line to the on the forehead and figure out where the muzzle starts. And if you look at this dog, the top of their head is right here the bottom of their head is right there. And if you measure halfway between here and there, that's about where the top of the nose is. So I'm always looking for those measurements, um, comparing one thing against another to see whether I'm in the right place. 
a, a mistake that a lot of people do is they don't do those measurements and they just dive right in. They do all kinds of detail and then realize that something's off. You're a lot better off to spend the time figuring out these landmarks or these measurements. Make sure you've got everything in the right place before you really dive into the detail. So it's a process of sketching big shapes and proportions. And then when you know you have those in the right place, then you can start adding more detail. So I've got just the roughest circle for the nose and then a little kind of triangle shape for the muzzle where it goes down. And that's all I'm gonna do right now there because it might not be quite right and I don't wanna dive in if it's not right. So now I'm figuring out where the eyes are gonna be. Pugs have really wide set eyes. So I'm thinking the eyes are, eyes are around there, but like I said, that might, might change a little bit. Keeping a very light touch with the pencil so that it doesn't damage the paper or uh, become difficult to erase if I, it turns out I need to erase it. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. I don't know, I think maybe the, I think maybe that's off a little bit, but I'm gonna move on. I'm not gonna get hung up on that too much because I already know that I have sort of the body in the right place. And Okay, so that's the neck. I'm gonna come down here. So I'm just moving around from place to place and just sharpening up the details a little bit at a time without getting too invested in any one area. And as you work on something else and then come back, you'll you'll be able to see whether it's accurate or not after your eyes get a chance to work on something else. Okay. And the feet are a little bigger. Okay, and then on this painting, I'm not gonna have the, um, I'm not gonna have the harnesses on the dogs. I'm just gonna have the collars. So I'm just gonna sort of block in where that collar is gonna go. Really rough. And I'll come back later, and see if it's, if it's accurate. Okay, then down here, got the dog's second foot and the tennis ball. Tennis ball is easy to draw because it's a perfect circle, or at least it should be, unless it's deflated or something. So we've got the rough circle of the tennis ball. And then their foot on top of it. And then this foot is kind of splayed out with the toes touching one toe and then the other. So I'm just indicating where the feet are and then I'm gonna keep moving. So I've got the head, the bigger dog, and remembering that the angle is tilted. So I draw that line there to help me remember and to keep everything tilted the same way. And once again, the top of the nose, I'll show you. The dog's head goes from here to here. And if you measure, it's about halfway from the top, it's halfway down to the top of their muzzle. So I'm gonna go halfway on my drawing, halfway from here to here and make a little mark. And that's my landmark for where that muzzle is gonna start. So I've got a real rough circle for the nose itself and then a little line, and then the lips come down there. Okay, and then I'm gonna go back up here and 
off to each side are the eyes. Really wide set. To get that feeling of a pug, it's really important to get those wide set eyes and that really smushed in nose. And then later we're gonna get those wrinkles in there. Okay. And then I'm not getting hung up, I'm gonna move on. I'm going to the top of the head. I think actually needs to be a little higher. So I'm gonna erase that. And then just very lightly, you don't wanna smudge, like I said, get rid of that. Now, while I'm working on this, I'm gonna mention that watercolor paper is a little bit fragile and you can't scrub on it with an eraser too much. You will cause little rough places on the paper that will cause problems when you're trying to paint later on. So that's another reason why you keep really light touch with the pencil so that if you need to erase, you don't damage the pencil or the watercolor paper surface. Okay. And I'm not gonna stop there. I'm not gonna keep working on the face too much. I'm gonna move over here and think about the body a little bit. And see, this is a little tricky place. This is a tricky little place because their foot goes back behind the head, disappears completely, and then the other leg is here. So all you're seeing of this is just the the foot itself, and then it disappears. And that's not quite what I have on my drawing. So I'm gonna have to move. I'm gonna have to move things around a little bit. Gotta figure out what's wrong. So you're really spending a lot of time on this initial drawing because it's really important that this is exactly how you want to be, how you want it to be before you dive in on the next step, which is going to be the, the pen, the ink. Once you've started in on the ink, that's very unforgiving. There's not really much changing it. So it's very, very important that you spend a lot of time on the drawing, make sure it's exactly right. And then once you've got that drawing right, you can go in with the ink confidently and make sure and you'll and you'll be fine because you you've already got it laid out the way it needs to be so um this is a fairly difficult drawing um i'm not going to say this is easy or beginner level drawing because it is not at all uh, i am going to have some videos about drawing later on um, some videos for beginners and to give you um some some practice on how to draw but for now this is a little bit more advanced and it might be fun to just watch it for fun or if you're already a fairly competent drawer then you're going to be able to use this technique um, but for now I'm going to stop there um, and I'm get because it's going to take me a while to do this drawing I'm going to stop here and uh, when I come back for video number two, I'm gonna have the drawing all finished and um, talk to you a little bit about that. And then the next step will be starting the pen. All right, thanks for watching. And um, be sure if you like this video to like it down there somewhere. And I'd really love it if you like the video to subscribe. I think the subscribe button is down here somewhere. So uh, this is a brand new video channel or a brand new YouTube channel for me. And I'd really appreciate it if you like the video and if you wanna see the next uh, dog portrait drawing uh, with the ink video when I put it out, please hit subscribe and that way you'll get a notification when that next video is up. So um, thank you, bye.